And he goes, oh, first turn, going to the Chiwu. Chiwu with the full team strip, attack bar pushback. Your Chung Pung resisted. No. Dude, your commentating is mwah. <laughs> Thank you. I have to um, do it. Just right, Stoic, put us through. Let's go. All right. What's going on? Week 17. Right. We haven't done podcasts in a while, guys, but it's great to have everyone back. New guests, we have JSS Morningfin here. This is an SWC focused podcast. Everyone here competed in SWC America prelims. Thompson, congratulations for making it through. I, I have confidence in everyone. Everyone's going to make it this weekend. I believe. I believe. But yeah, did you want to introduce yourself, Jess? Oh, I'm Jess. Um, this year's first year for my SWC. And this is my first time in this podcast. That's to join here. Yeah, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it, especially on super short notice. I know we, we weren't really planning on doing a podcast this week, but we're like, you know what? Let's let's see if we can, because I was talking with Fadas about it. Hi, his name is JSS. He's a dirty Pontos abuser. Yes. <laughs> My most feared. Yep. <laughs> okay, Thompson, if you had to pick between Pontos or Ragdoll, do you still pick Ragdoll? Uh, 100% Ragdoll. Because um, I have a lot of units that does similar to what Pontos does, but like I know the best, but yeah. I guess in terms of structure for this podcast, I'm going to kind of leave it open to you guys. You guys can talk about anything you want to, um, or we can just kind of use this as a time to just ch talk with chat if they have questions for us. Uh, but Fadas wanted to discuss something very specifically, so I'll give the floor to him uh, for what his question is. Oh, this sounds serious. Well, just a thought. I want to see maybe other people share the same view on it, or maybe they think whatever, it's okay as it is. But I found it kind of odd that you only need to qualify, like get, let's say, top 100. It could end up being higher, but top 100 once out of the two seasons. Is this a good leeway for players, or should it be based on both seasons? Whether it's an average or you should finish top 100 back to back. We had people who finished, uh, for example, like they went like top 50. Then the next season or the season before, they finished like 260 something. I don't just random numbers. I'm not naming out anyone because there was a good handful of people like that. But so that... I have a question for you before we kind of get into that. Yes. Um, do you know very specifically what the qualifications are to get into SWC? Like, is it specified and listed to say you must get blank within a blank range and you don't need yeah. both or you don't need one i don't think it is right from what i saw it is if we could still access it i would tell you to look at it where you could see like when you click on the profile of a person's history what they finished 16 what they finished on 17 and they give you the extra information what they did last year or any other achievement they had mm -hmm. like for example on mine it shows 1634 season 17 was 75 and then it was showed first entry. Some of the other, I can't remember actually who it was, but there was like, like five or six, maybe more, where you had one season was 200 and something. And the next season was like top, some kind of top 100 rank. And then it'd be say like first entry, or it would say they won legend or something, or they qualified last year, mm -hmm. something like that. What I'm getting at is, it, should it be an average? Like, should they have to prove themselves twice in a row? Or should it just be as it is now, just to give more leeway for some players. So what I'm asking you is, do you yeah. know for deep. certain yeah. that it is not an average? Heroes, that question is really deep, and I also feel like that question is a pretty good coin flip too, because like I could see it from both sides where it's good that like you know they get to see returning players. Like if you're a Dreams Joseph fan, or like you know you're a Tiger fan or whatever, you get to see your old returning players come back, and I could also see. Uh, another point, another paradigm where um, you have to do your wings and uh, rank up there. Also, yeah. I feel like if they actually try, like if like Tiger actually tries or like whatever, then it's not that hard for them to rank up too, you know? It's Maybe not, no. Try. Like for sure he could have, let's say, for Tiger is a good example actually. He was one of them, right? Where he, he did really good on one of the seasons, but the other season he, fin he didn't even finish top 100, correct? But there's got to be some type of clout for him being like a SWC 2017 chap or something, 2018 chap. Yeah, and then they have that as the third point. From what I, I mean, to answer Tyler's question before I forget about it, from what I under, based on other players who didn't qualify, if it was based on an average, they would have got in. Okay, so you're looking at average specifically for the rank, but I think another thing that's relevant and important is win rate percentage. Because if I, if I finish rank 250 with a 70% win rate, Versus finishing like rank 80 something with a 
like around 55% win rate. I think there's a significant difference in the strength between you and that person. Win rate was absolutely horrid, though. I actually had the lowest win rate in top 100. I, I, think, don't, I think like part of uh, the question is like whether you should um, reward like doing all your wings because like I do feel like win rate is not that big of a deal. I think what not, Pierce, I don't think Pierce is talking about is like, yeah, it's like uh, rewarding people that is trying, you know, to be an SWC. Yeah. Like people putting in the effort. Yeah. Oh, Josh oh. gave us an answer in chat. It's solely so based fame off. memory is saying it's solely based off the top eight players from season 17. And then you exclude those players and take the top eight from season 16. So he's saying that you take the top eight from the most recent season, then you exclude those players from the rankings. And then you take the top eight from the season before that, which actually makes a lot of sense. And there are some people that actually rank high, but didn't want to, but doesn't want to really participate. And you have to, mm -hmm exclude them and there are limited pool of people that you can select from there's also something i feel like that's overlooked it's like uh the fact that your uh influencer like daniel karaoke Firas, like they're at a huge disadvantage just streaming they don't need to stream but they stream and like they're at a huge disadvantage you know like it's not easy to stream and also like play in swc but people like to watch that people like to watch Fira's in SWC, Daniel Carioca, and stuff like that, you know? So I think, like, if your rank is a little bit lower, but you do, you know, support the community and you do stream, that should give you some type of edge as well. I don't know. That's how I feel. About that, I don't know. I think it should just still be solely based on your rank that you do finish, regardless of, I don't like the term influencer for myself, but in terms of, like, whether you're streamer or not, but... I don't know. I just thought I'd bring it up. I'm not, like I gotta say, I'm not entirely sure. I'm just wondering if it, if it were to be changed to be that way, would we really see something different? Or would we still see the same people? It just forces them to actually do their wings back to back for like, and our, this year's example, season 16 and 17, to be at that kind of high rank. Or does maybe, does this way give other people chances? Because maybe they'll slack on 17, thinking they did really good in 16. Then somebody surpassed them in 17 by, let's say, two ranks, and then they boot the other guy out somehow. I don't know. I saw I bring it up. Maybe I thought it would be interesting. Uh, I think another factor to it is that yeah. by forcing people to play to the really high degree in both seasons, you also risk burning that player out where they, either they just won't want to play in SWC anyways, or they're just not going to be able to do it. Think about how many wings they all do in, a, in like a season, and think about how much it, it actually burns you out. I don't get burned out from RTA. I don't believe you even for a second when you say How that. How dare you? <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of factors to it. Um, I think that there's a lot of validity. In, like Thompson said, there's validity in both sides, right? Where you have people who want to try really hard in both seasons. And I think if you're, if you're someone who tries really hard in both seasons, right? You get the advantage of having a high rank for both the 18 cutoff or the 17 cutoff and the 16 cutoff, right? There's no downside to pushing high in both seasons, right? But if you want to push in one season and not in the other, then you take the risk and you know you, you it's a risk versus reward right you choose what you want to do and that's all it is i guess another thought that just came to my head though is like if maybe one balance patch really affects somebody to get their top 100 and this let's say they couldn't in 16 but they got it in 17 because of the patch was so good to them maybe <laughs> that's another factor that gets not, them in. like what if they get nerfed yeah, or, and yeah, then it, it's even harder because if you yeah. did really well in 16 and then you got nerfed into 17, going into SWC might be even harder for you, which is why they take the season 17 ranks and then the 16 ranks afterwards. I guess it's good how it is then. Just how we talk about it. Something just to maybe clear I don't know if I would in. say it's good how it is, but I think it's okay. I think it's acceptable. I think that's probably the best way to put it. What about expanding the amount of participants? Now, that was the next thing I wanted to bring up. I uh, think expanding participants is a very good idea. Mm -hmm. However, it also costs a lot more and it takes mm -hmm. a lot more time because your prelim days double. Yeah. So it's an extra two to three days for Amer Americas and APAC. It's an extra minimum one, uh, two days for every other cup as well. For the first round, that is not there's one lose for the first or a PO3 for the first round. It is not like not, not double lose. Just one lose and you go. And then from there, you get have like double loser have the loser bracket so you're saying first round of prelims is best of one yeah, and then you, you have a loser bracket, like, and winners bracket. Have, like let's just remind me of the dota 2 international you have like higher ranks and like like four or six of them eight of them in the winners bracket 
and like another eight in the loser bracket starts starts and go out like like and it's like more as much RNG as Summoner's War, man. Yes. Or just to do one yeah. match, it is kind of like three, uh, like VO three, like three matches. Yeah, we can minimum best of three if they were to expand the, which is like as it is now. But it's just like Tyler said, we just literally double the prelim days. Yeah. And it, then uh, they're still stuck on weekends because they don't want to. Well, is it really bad if they do it on weekdays? It's very hard for a lot of people to play them during weekdays. Yes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. It's not just for the players, but for the viewers. In general, it's harder for everyone, yeah. It's mostly for the players. That's the thing, right? Yeah. The viewers can always watch it on VOD if they really want to. But, yeah, you're right. It would be I think if you want more participants in SWC, like, that will be good for the game. Like, money-wise, yeah. health-wise, and people will stay motivated more. But also, you can think about it, like, yeah, one, it co- takes a lot more time. It takes a lot more money for Comptos as well. But also, like... They could people could actually just play the ladder like as if they're trying to qualify for SWC and that's your preliminary in itself, you know? That's everyone's test to get in already. It's hard though because SWC mode is a different mode as well, right? Versus ladder. Because you have the pre bands. So it does play out fairly different. Uh fairly fairly, fairly. Yeah. So okay, so my, my example for that is people who have one or no LD Nat five have a significant disadvantage in pre band mode versus having like three to four that are usable or at a decent level, right? It's harder to ban out your strongest things than it is when you don't have as many. <laughs> I've had times where I only had, I didn't have this much LDs. And the way I would practice it is just like play ladder without using that LD. Without them, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, that's, and that's a good way to do it. That's a really good approach. Um, I, the, the, oh, reason, the reason I bring that up is because people always ask like, why don't we have pre-ban mode in regular ladder? And I say, one, it would take a long time. And two... <laughs> it would really just not benefit everyone who's asking for it. Like most of the players who ask for that don't realize that it would make it harder for them. Like imagine being someone who doesn't have like a lot of units and every game someone just pre-bans your Lulu. Now you have no option to pick Lulu. Just like take the, the, what's the light different. one? What's her name? Shushu? Shushu. There you go. Just take Shushu. Well, no, used right in uh, the APAC by uh, that one guy against 4Baby or something. And he actually won that match. So, no, I just kind of want to branch off this because I also like what, oh. what Zigbear had brought up here. Like, so how would you feel if they opened up more tournaments? And the only reason I'm bringing up more tournaments is Summoner's War is an old game. You know what I mean? So it's like the the only way I see them saying like, oh, this is when Summoner's War is finally dying is when, well, when you don't see SWC anymore. But if they say maybe no, not do live events anymore and they do only online events, what if we saw more tournaments? And the uh, what I'm saying here is the way we qualify already you have an eight qualifying there. But I would love to see some tournament play outside of this, possibly allowing, I don't know about G1, but a G2 to the G3s that don't qualify, you know, normally in a open qualifier where if you achieve a G2 through G3, whatever that G3 rank is, where you didn't qualify one way, you can sign up for these, uh, sign up for these tournaments. And these tournaments are then posted at whatever time they are posted. And these are to get your qualifying position towards SWC, where you then make it into prelims. So you didn't make it regularly, but you made it through a qualifier to get in. So there's two parts to this. One, you want essentially um, the Dota style of tournament set up for qualifying for ti which would be the equivalent of swc what you're looking for is you're looking for four large scale tournaments or three large scale tournaments throughout the year that give you points towards qualification for the international or in this case swc world championship so when you get that when you get that it it doesn't matter that it's not just dota dota coined it very well and actually structured it really really well when ti first came out um but the point is, you have these smaller cups that allow you qualification and grant entry into the big tournament at the end of the year. And what happens with that is there's always wildcard slots and there's always slots for people to get in near the end, right? But if you are good enough throughout the year, you will basically lock in your spot and not have to worry too much about it when the time comes for like picking the right number, like who who actually gets in based on their ranks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that would be more. great, but that requires Com to us to put the effort in to make that. It's a lot of money and it's a lot of time. I think it's a great idea. I just don't see it happening realistically. Um, Josh also has brought up the Chinese community does tournaments every season. I believe that's the one that you played in last time we podcasted, Thompson. You and Silent, I think, played in a Chinese tournament. Mm-hmm. I think that's the exact tournament that he's talking about too. 
Those tournaments are awesome. Those tournaments are awesome, but it doesn't get the same amount of clout as SWC gets. There has to be an incentive, right? Like SWC's incentive is what? It's literally a little... Money. Um, money. Clout. And uh, and for some people, it's clout because some people don't really want money, right? Well, they don't need money, I should say. Like, But we have Amazon tourney, but Amazon's limited to C3. Amazon does get the player base involved, does it not? I haven't been involved with anything with the Amazon tourneys. I'm asking. Does it? Does the Amazon tourneys, like, get people going? Like, interested? They're like, they want to they wanna play, they want to participate. Do they try hard? From the from the player base, not the anyone who's been part of that? I, uh, just because I have such a strong idea, idea about this, like, I have to speak up. Like, sure. people, some people do it for the clouds, some people do it for the money, but, like, I think the right reason to do it is to make your account the best version it could be. But okay, yeah, well, go on. No, yeah, some people, no, some another, people just do it for themselves. Another good, that's right? another good reason, yeah. I would say like that. Me, the, the reason why I compete is just so like I could make my account the best version it could be. You know, that's no, that's a good, that's a good reason as well. Like because we have Amazon tourneys as well, right? Oh, Not yeah, like yeah. for Guardians, but for C three and below. Yeah. No, if uh... hey, Amazon tournaments don't get much clout either, like the viewers, you could tell like you don't get yeah, we much. get a couple thousand that's about it yeah, does yeah. Yeah. advertise it yes yeah yes, they do, they do. They do in game as well if we were to use that as a measuring stick for if they added more tourneys does that no, reflect like, that no not bashing like <laughs> not bashing WNBA, but it's kind of like would you rather watch you know nba or WNBA? you know there there's gonna be more people watching the nba not bashing yeah, that yeah i guess so i guess so the yeah. thing is unless you throw it in front of people's faces oh, and really tell them like hey there's a good reason to watch this they're not going to make the change nobody wants to make the change nobody wants to go out of their way to watch something that doesn't that isn't important to them right swc is important to people because there's a lot of attachment to players there's a lot of attachment to your region there's a lot mm. of attachment to NA is better than EU, EU is better than Asia, Asia is better than NA. You know, there's so much more competition involved. There's, it's like a sense of nationalist pride almost when it comes to SWC, right? You don't get that in smaller scale tournaments. It doesn't exist in those situations. I do think that'll be really fun to watch though, like a girls tournament for Summoner's War, like an all girls tournament. That'll be fun. Not because like, I, I'm only saying WNBA because like the competition, people can't dunk, like just the, it's just different. But then like, uh, I do feel like uh, like an all women's uh, Summoners War like uh, tournament will be fun to watch. Leisha OP, like a, I, I believe a, I believe Leisha OP. The, the, the all women tournament. SWC would be awesome. I think there was one a long time really? ago. Really? Uh, the Chinese people do that. The Taiwanese people I know do that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. You, know? you know what? I really want them to take from Dota the the most the I, and everyone the battle agree. pass. No, no, not that. Everyone disagrees. It's not too much work. But then everyone disagrees with me on this, but I really, really want this. It's like, I wish they have, like, there's, uh, you could buy, like, skins and trade it. Like, you could buy, like, an Okiano staff that's on fire. And then, like, you know, all you have to do is, like, watch SWC the first round, and then they give it to you. And then, like, you know, two years from now, you can trade that staff for whatever, or maybe money, or maybe not. Maybe Bitcoin. I don't know, but that would be really cool. If they give like just cosmetic stuff that you could like trade, oh, that'd be mm. good. The art team is pretty good, so I'm sure they can fancy up some stuff on that. Right? Yeah, nice, nice they little they uh, quirks like that. They cannot trade, uh, huh? But you can can trade. You cannot trade. Yeah, trade. yeah, but if they make it so like there's skins, and you could trade skins. That'd be really cool. That'd be really really awesome. You know how Dota has like inscriptions and stuff like that, or you can get drops like at times in tournaments and stuff. Yeah, like like what if you what if you got like a skin. Or like like a cosmetic for your unit that had like a branded SWC 2021, or it's like I got you got this as a drop from this region or something, right? Or it's like yeah. this dropped because Thompson won SWC North America's Cup, like that was the drop for that exact moment, like you know, like a moment in history. Or like they could drop emotes yeah. for that too. That would be really cool. Or trade, you know, like uh, they let you trade like uh, island art, not island art, but like the island uh, like island items on your island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah cosmetics, yeah. just cosmetic stuff. For sure. Like Furniture. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be kind of cool, but yeah, I, just, I, agree. I don't see it happening. But I would be cool. I I'd be like that absent. For some reason, every time I talk about it, like people are like, "Oh, that's a bad idea." I met up with uh, J Mac three weeks ago or two weeks ago, and we saw each other in person. And what he was really proud of was his um, was his Counter Strike gear. How cool if he would be yeah. like, "Yo, you could you know show off your like, hey, you know, I have like this Okiano staff, or like, oh, I have this like." A uh, helmet for Beast Rider, you know? 
COD was thinking of doing that with similar things with cosmetics. They do that in Dota already, I believe. Uh, this is a little bit separate of SWC, but I kind of want your thoughts on this because you guys do play in, in these higher end tournaments. What do you think of having like a Sunday, like a Sunday club where like every Sunday there's just like an open qualifying tournament where like anyone can play, but there's like a like a, a random rule set each week and the rewards are just like in-game crystals or something like that. It'll be kind of like Reno where it's just like the same people rushing every week, right? It'll no, no, be like, but it's, oh. it's just RTA. Just okay, RTA. yeah, and I'll, I'll be like, it'll be like Thompson Truewell every game or like, you know. No, but they have brackets. They have brackets for like every category, right? They'd have like, they'd have like a fighter two, fighter three bracket, a conqueror one, conqueror two bracket, yeah. C3 bracket, G1 bracket, G2 bracket, G3 bracket. And that's what I'm saying. Like, like that. No one really will watch the fighter bracket. They'll no, be no, like... but it's it's not about watching that. It's not about oh. watching that. It's about playing in it to get rewards. Yeah, that's but like a reason. The, 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 the rankings, you can, you can, someone can, you're like in, in the guarding level, they can drop to. They would, sure. uh, what they would have it as a requirement is, is it would be your previous rank, your current rank, and they'd average it. Or they take your previous, your best, and your current. You can just like keep that rank, you know. You can, you can, but a lot of like, it, it will, in Guardian specifically, I think it will be less important, right? Because if Guardian, you're someone who wants to finish G3, you're most likely never going to be able to drop into the G1 league for that. But you can fight G2 players, but G2 players can also still beat you. But the, the Guardian player can drop that and maintain that for a long time. And then when the season ends, you can climb up. So, that's, so that's why I'm saying it takes, it takes into account all three of your ranks, right? It takes into account your best finish, your most recent finish, and then your current rank. So let's say your best finish is rank, like, let's say 98 or something. You're a, you're a G3 player. Your last season's rank was 293, or even let's say it's like 700, right? But you're currently sitting in Conqueror 3. You're most likely getting slated into the Guardian 2 League. Like, it, there's no way it allows you to play in the G1 or lower league. I think uh, more tournaments is always a good idea, but why I'm kind of like the a big deal for me is to recreate the type of anxiousness and nervousness and uh, clout and uh, just popularity of a SWC. And if you make that tournament every Sunday, I think like a lot of people will be taking it for granted. And I don't know. I, I don't know if it'll be as fun as like, you know, what you get out of SWC, you know, like mm -hmm. you can ask JS or you can ask uh, Firas, even you as a commentator, when is SWC is just different, right? If you tell me, yeah, hey, hey love, I want you to commentate on this Sunday's, uh, you know, tournament, you'll be like, uh, I'm busy, right? <laughs> every Sunday. Yeah. I guess the concept behind it was more that so like people can get experience of like what it's like to play in tournament. It's not it's definitely not the same. Don't get me wrong. It's not the same as SWC. Nothing can emulate what SWC is and what it means to everybody. But my thoughts were if you create something like this, it creates kind of like a trial system so people can actually play in these tournament settings, but also kind of understand it. And it gives people the option, hey, I want to commentate a tournament this Sunday or I want to practice commentating tournaments. We got the Sunday league this weekend. Let me just do that, right? Having if it was maybe once a month, it might build a bit of uh, give it, I, like, like give some someone a bit of a build up, right? Like to like anticipate it. Because like w w the biggest deal for me with Summoners War is having more newer players be able to play Summoners War. And right now, if yeah. there's a tournament every Sunday, people are working on. There's just too much stuff, too much homework you got to work on. Guild War, Siege Battle, a team for that dungeon, team for this dungeon, you know, and. I think it'll be quite overwhelming. And I do feel like a month, every month or every other month will be better. But uh, yeah, like if you, did you notice like they put devil months in the weekly, uh, monthly reward now, login reward. That's yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It, they need to have this game for this game to survive. They need to be more newer players to play this game. But right now it's not that enjoyable for newer players. The, it it's depends like on their goals though. I've like, I've seen, a, I've seen one new player. He was in my guild. He played for only, not even two years. He's playing at a very high G3 Siege level because that's his only focus. Yeah. They throw him in RTA, that's a different thing. RTA does is have its own requirements. That guy you're talking about, he is a beast. Because even to be really good at Guild War, you have to be have to make your teams, your uh, uh, Dragons team, your Giants team, your... Uh, you know, that takes so long. I think the, the big thing but, with, with it all is the like... I believe you there is that guy, but I'm just saying like that's still overwhelming amount of homework he did to get yeah. really in guild guild work. And he got to the like to the point where he's at one of the highest one ex guild. Oh, did he leave already, Glory? Oh shit. I guess he couldn't cut it for a high. But he still played really hard. RTA. When it comes to RTA, RTA is like completely optional content, right? Yeah. No one has yeah. to do it. It's and at the end of the day, when you players. Yeah, and when you look at RTA as well, like a lot of players don't even play the whole season. Like there are a very big handful of players who do not play at the end of the season because it's just 
it's too much work it's too time consuming so they just play later on right so i guess the concept for this is it kind of influences people to kind of play a little bit more throughout the season but also have a reason to play it like we have the achievements right but if you're if you play the first three to four weeks maybe two to three weeks you're usually done all your achievements by then right and then afterwards it's like okay what do i do for the two months i've been waiting and not do anything yeah. until like the last three weeks of the season so even if we didn't do them every week what if we did like did them by region like every week was a different region and then on the fourth week it's all regions together or something i feel like it's very demotivating if you like spend so much time in like trying to be good in your weekly rta sunday tournament and you don't do good every week and you just feel like quitting is what i'm worried about you know well yeah some people just want to do rta say somebody which is, is, yeah, yeah. So, so like, yeah, both of those exist, right? It's you have you have the people who are like, yes, it's demotivating, and I want to play. But you also have the people on the opposite side of that who are like, wow, these people are better than me. I want to learn from them, and I want to see what they're doing, right? And then you have the okay, and then you have the other people who just don't care at all. They they don't care at all about any of it, which is a lot of players. A lot of players don't care about RTA. They don't even care about SWC. Some people want to care about RTA, but they're always discouraged, which they shouldn't be. There's a lot of variety in ways you can play. And like even for new, like, but it is hard. Like Thompson's saying, like to try to make it easier for newer players to want to get into it. But at the same time, they gotta actually have like better or not better, uh, realistic uh, expectations for their account. If they're always yeah, looking, these, oh, I want these to be guardian, as benchmarks, I, right? Yeah, like be, yeah, benchmarks. Have, that's the word I'm looking for. Benchmarks. But that, that's what these tournaments are for. These tournaments are for benchmarks. They're to give you realistic goals and achievements, right? If you play well in the fighter tournaments, like okay, I'm making improvements. I'm working to get better, right? Whereas, like or, in a regular season, you don't get anything if you don't finish Guardian One. You get literally nothing. <laughs> no one cares what you get if you don't get Guardian One. People in Guardian Two don't even care about getting Guardian Two. They'd rather get Guardian Three or Guardian One. Most people will push higher because they're like, "I already got one guaranteed skin. Let me see if I can get a, a third one." Otherwise, they just drop it back down. They're like, "All right, I'll just gonna play until G three or I get G one." My point is, there's nothing that incentivizes a player to play RTA if you're not at least Guardian. So. Back to the tournament discussion, then we just maybe have more tournaments like the Am like Amazon tourney. What was it again? We said it, it's pretty successful for the most it's, part, like for encouraging right. people. It's all right. It's all right. Well, didn't you cast it, or am I thinking of Sean? B? I did cast it. Sean okay. and I casted it together. So then, with your experience in the Amazon tourney, what could they have added, or is there just nothing to add to make it more interesting for the lower C three lower? Just make more of them. <laughs> just make more of them. That's all it is literally just make more of them okay like, well, there you go problem you solved. have amazon tournaments once a year oh is it only oh i thought it was i felt like it was twice a year am i tripping it's once a year and it's region locked as well it's region locked to like very specific regions the regions yeah. that amazon can, can use right oh oh so it's an amazon thing okay then the call to us needs to just do more then even it doesn't need to be even if let's say it's not monthly let's say after swc is over they have something in december Maybe December is not the best for everyone time wise, but if Amazon is what early, like January, February, if I'm correct, hmm? or is it Amazon turn tournaments? When are they? In May. In May. April, May. April, May. SWC no, I think, is I think they were just pretty much May, like yeah. four months if you include prelims from August, well, end of July to like November. And then. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think about how it would be divided just to keep everyone interested in tournaments at least. I don't know. The thing is, you can add a lot of things to the schedule that are optional and it doesn't detract from what's already there. Like It doesn't detract from... People who are focusing on SWC won't be derailed focusing on an Amazon tournament. They're going to focus on SWC. right? People who are watching this SWC tournament are not going to be like, oh, I just watched the, S the um, Amazon tournament. I don't want to watch SWC. They're like, That's not a thing. If anything, it's the other way around. They're like, oh, I just watched SWC. I don't really care to watch these smaller tournaments. But their existence still has relevance, right? It brings something to the game for the players, and it brings something to the game for the viewership. I think uh, when you said, like, tournament every week was, for me, felt a little bit exaggerated. I feel like... like I once, think you're right on that. It's a bit yeah, at that point, I was like, whoa, that's, like, a lot of work. And that's not what we need, you know? A little bit less work, you know? Everyone already has a lot in their hands making faster teams and farming and uh, Guild Wars, Siege War. You know, so I, I like once a month, you know, or whatever. But, you know, more turns is always a good idea, like what I said before. And do you want to come to us as sponsors a, a streamer to host a tournament for, like, let's say you you are one month, they got Stoic, 
stoic one month you got going down the list on my followers who also like it doesn't matter like say okay you're hosting this month's tourney uh keep it up to whatever rank you decide and whatnot just and this is a prize of give him a code that gives him a fuck ton or i don't know or a bunch of scrolls and something like that i don't know if that's more incentivizing for the lower lower ranks to get more into the game maybe something like that if they don't want to do the work themselves give it to somebody else is that i think, thing? I think there's also another tie-in that could be relevant like content in this game is very separated right we don't really have tie-ins between different things so like people who care about siege don't usually have like a big tie-in with rta unless they're like a well-rounded person who wants to do all content like people who care about siege tournament for example don't care about the other things or like if you care about rta tournament you generally don't care as much about siege tournament right but what if we kind of like tied the content together? And Arena is a lost hope, so I don't even want to bring it up. But what if we talked about like Siege Tournament, right? So Siege Tournament is just Siege. But what if we what if we had like an RTA Siege Tournament where what happens is the guilds who do really well in the Siege Tournament will also nominate certain players from their guild to play in an RTA tournament as well yeah. or something else. Because that would be interesting to, for people to watch. Be like, wow, three of the best players from these four guilds in my server are playing RTA against each other for some title or something, right? Like it's, SSA, you, you nominate three people from, or even if you did top eight, you know, you nominate three people from SSA, three people from um, Mali, three people from uh, SW and Chill, Mithril, SD. Like you just get so many more cool things. Like they did that that one time at SWC, like actually did it at oh, the SWC finals. Remember like- That was fun. And that was cool. But like, why don't yeah. they do that with what they have already and just make it an online event? <laughs> I think today I'm a little bit more like I, I feel like very uh I don't know today I feel more negative than usual like I, I disagree on a lot of stuff one about like having a tournament every week and two about like the whole like you know a, a lot of these tournaments I think like the why I'm so negative today is because I feel like yes you can have a lot of tournaments you can have more SWCs you can have more of these but it doesn't I think what's more important is having more balance patches because like you can have all the you can have all the tournaments in the world, but the main root problem is making the game fun and more playable, and having like older players come back, newer players come in, and like that's why I keep repeating like having newer players come in is so important. Having older players come back was more important. So like before like you have more tournaments, more more fighting, more rewards, any of those ideas like just making having more balance patches, having more making the game more fun is like more important, right? Yeah, I agree. I'm so if you. you're if you're saying you want that the like newer player base to have more fun with the game, I think instead of necessarily a balance patch, I think what you're looking for is you're looking for a patch that changes free to play units more often. No, I uh, well e even older players to come back. Like a lot of players just quit because like they're just like you know like yo my LD five just sitting in storage or oh this unit just sucks. I love this unit. It's my first unit pulled. You know and uh, just waiting, waiting. It's just they're just over it. There's a lot you know from like. Make it a bud, there's Foxy, whatever. Just players that like I, I just started playing this game with and watched this whole time, you know? I feel like more more important than like all these tournaments. These tournaments are cool, but they won't make people play the game. It's what I feel more so than the root problem, which is making the game fun to play and fun to watch. Um, you know, they did a little buff to Chloe and uh Faint Memory used Chloe, and people like watching that because that's fun. Like, imagine having more units being buffed, more balance patches, more changes, more, more fun to watch, you know? More fun to play. That's the whole more important thing. Then, when the game is, like, good like that, where they're more balanced, more fun to watch, you can have as many tournaments as you want. People are going to open tournaments up themselves. Most important thing is just making this game super fun to play, right? More enjoyable. You had something you want to say, Jess? No, I, I, no, I just see, see Koros as he's coming back. Is he actually? I think so. I I've faced him several times. No way, dude. I'm checking my friends list right now. I don't believe it. There's you still no kept way. him on your friends list? I did. No, no, no. He's offline. He's offline for two years. Two years. <laughs> Not the same name. <laughs> A different curls. No, I see. Yeah, I still have the same account added. It's the one with the 10 million Zyroses. Yeah, because it has Arena Legend on it. This is still the same one. Yeah, he's not. He's not back. Sadly, it would be nice. Um, while I agree with what you're saying, Thompson, I do think that when we're in a state where the game is really good for a lot of people it'll be a lot easier to create more incentive to do things and create tournaments the only problem with that is i feel like it's very unrealistic i don't think in a game like this you can actually have the kind of balance that you're looking for it's not like, necessarily no, balance but it's about i feel like man i'm disagreeing a lot today but uh diversity. Just, being like, it, 
to say like, hey, uh, let's keep Shazam bad. Let's just keep Shazam in Furious' storage. You yeah. know, let's keep Cadiz in his storage. People don't want to wait that long, you know, for you could do it. You could do it. You could do it like next week. They could buff Shazam and Furious could use it. You know, like it, I'd use an RTA somehow if I could. <laughs> but, I yeah. get but like before you make a game that no no one wants to compete in, compete, the problem is you want to make it fun to compete. I don't know if that makes sense, but like you you mean to make the games fun before you have all these tournaments lined up. I, I, what I understand what you're asking for, Thompson, is just like people can not having to summon everything. And the only reason they have to summon everything because they all have to certain a certain set of summons, a certain set of units to actually compete in RTA. Yeah. So when it comes to a guardian level, like it should be RTA should be defined by your rune quality, not your unit pool. I should be able to, and they've been addressing it. Complos has been addressing it with some of the two A's. And some of uh, four stars being a little bit better. It's like somebody I don't should... think that will ever exist. That's why I feel like, like yes, tournaments. I feel like it's cool, but it's like a band aid over the problem. The problem is like newer players aren't coming in, and older players aren't coming back. You know, and, and like for an older player to come back, if I hear like, oh, my Shazam's back, I didn't have to wait so long. I just had to like take a maybe six months hiatus, and Shazam's buffed. Okay, you know, Jara. Yeah, I know, like. I, like all my clothes no like i could be the one th i could sympathize i could sympathize with it because like all my friends that i play the game with from like silent to patrick to L, all these people they're like they're over waiting for their monsters or this game to be balanced they're just like yo like you know i'm, I'm done with it if like in the middle they buffed a jara or maybe a, a shazam you know you know they they'll have a chance to stay because it's more fun to play it's like re 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 reinvigorating like I was gonna, like I was gonna quit. Like I was gonna stop playing Summoners War, but I pulled a ragdoll. You know, like if they balance the game, the game's more fun to watch. That's the problem we have. Like they need to have more balance patches. And to Wasn't say that, like, that's impossible, I don't know if that's impossible, man. Unrealistic? I don't think it's unrealistic, right? One of the hard things is that you two want completely opposite things, right? You're saying right. I want the game to be more rune based, and you're saying I want the game to be a lot more balanced in terms of unit potential like what gets changed i want my friends to come back which means they have to buff they basically have to buff old ld5s that's it's very specifically that because the the big draw for a lot of older players that quit is i have an ld nat 5 and it sucks or even newer players that just pulled like uh the new mage or like the light ryu or whatever or dark ryu right i'm not talking about i'm saying new players are quitting and old players are quitting only because balance patches like there's a root problem Having a lot of tournaments, tournaments is not fixing the root problem of why people are quitting or why tournaments aren't as fun to watch. At least some LD95 need to be used. The base never can, 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 can be used anywhere. Even yeah. I think every, everything I needs to have one place that it's good, at least. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. I but don't think you, everything has to be good in our team. You see, but where can you use the bay? Nowhere. Nowhere. It, it, Nowhere. You know, the bay, it, it, you sit there and you're not going yeah. to use it. The bay, like, we can argue about, like, which LD is the worst. There's a lot of LDs that's bad. But the point is, like, to have, to roll out more balance patches more frequently, you know? Like, I remember, I don't know if you guys played, like, four years ago, but I remember they roll out balance patches way more often. And it's, like, getting a little gift. Now it, wasn't it's, like, that, it wasn't that much more often. I don't know, I balance like balance patches bad. were still eight to ten weeks. And now they're, like, it felt 12 really weeks. Good. It doesn't feel as... Good. We also had a we also had a lot less units back then. Uh maybe it's that. Maybe it's that. I think I think with units, a big issue is that every time it's power it's always like power creeping issue, right? New units that come out either are really, really strong because they pertain the or they contain the kits of multiple units, like the best parts of multiple units, right? Bellinus contained the kit of multiple units, and it was really good. But the problem with that is that like they either make it insanely strong or completely trash. And then you get that really big split. And it just creates a wider gap in separation. I think they need to slow down on releasing units. They had a pretty good balance with it, you know, a couple of years ago where they were releasing a new unit like every like yeah. four to six months, right? Two to three new new families a year, or sorry, four to six new families a year was okay. Because they were releasing four stars and five stars. Nowadays, I feel like we're getting new units every two to three months. And it's just it's a lot. It was at a point we were actually complaining that there was like not enough new units coming out. But yeah, then I, now I don't really I don't really mind new units, but like let the example's like this, like, I don't think Furious will be playing Summoner's War if they never buff his next. I, I could be wrong, I could be wrong, 
But like, buffing Nyx made Summoner's War more enjoyable for Fearless to play. It made it more enjoyable, but it was streaming is actually what keeps me playing Sum uh, Summoner's War because I wasn't really using Nyx at that people. time. Yeah. Streaming actually kept me going on it because I was getting really frustrated. It's not, it's not just because of my Nyx buff, but it's just like unit... Uh, I'm like I'm still in need of so many regular element units to want to compete, but I can't say I'll use this as a substitute because to like it's good to have some units that are stupidly unique where they f fill a really niche role and it counters a good amount of units. But there should be some kind of substitute is kind of what I'm getting at. Like okay, since I don't have a I don't have a Juno, so I'm gonna use what as an example. Not the um to deal with heavy debuffs. Or I'm, I don't have a hay gang, so I'm going to use a what? What am I using? Or if I don't have an Oki, and if I never pulled Carnal, fuck, I'd be screwed. Because I, there's not, a, the, till now, there is not a fire unit other than Carnal and Oki yeah. to deal that gives it a control element that screws us over. But now there's, we have two rather than just Oki. We have Carnal now. You can argue Bellinus maybe, but then that's kind of like, the annoyance i'm getting at but then you go to the wind units you have four of them that do aoe attack bar pushback for some reason or five of them four or five something like that then you have w water which doesn't have anything at all of value that's the balance it is balancing what i'm getting at pretty much where we don't have huge di yeah they're tyrone a four star which is pretty much the only good water unit yeah Varad, That's, my boy. Varad, uh, his 93 no, base Poseidon, speed. Poseidon is actually the best one. Poseidon's the best yeah, Poseidon. one. He doesn't glance, right? Like we, we can say that they got better. They they gave higher base speed finally to the old units, like the, the chickens. But then what about... You, you already know. Okay, you gave it to the birds. What about the, the dragons? Other than... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Jemire, who didn't get a speed... Uh, who else doesn't get a speed awakening from the dragons? I don't remember anymore. Jemire does get a speed awakening. Only Jemire, right? Only mm -hmm. Jemire. Yeah. Only Jemire. But they, they addressed the issue for one of the families mm -hmm. from 1999 but from when Summoners War started. But then when you go to uh, the rest of the old units, they're still sitting at next to zero base speed, becoming unusable. I still don't use a single one of my Chimeras, for example. Again, I, I don't know why I'm so... I, I'm just a dick today, all right? I just disagree on everything today. Oh, you're I, good. I'm, you're I'm good, dude. Don't worry about it. it. Like, when you say, I don't feel like they should come out with new units, that's not what we need. But I don't feel like new units impact newer, newer players from leaving or older players from coming back. In fact, I feel like having new Second Awakened units or having new units come out, like, it makes me happy. Or it makes newer players, like, it doesn't matter if a new monster comes out. Newer player is a newer player. If they pull it, they pull it. Plus, they're doing the SP summons now. It's really fun for newer players to be like, oh, hey, I summoned this new unit. I don't mind new units coming out or new second awakening monsters coming out because like it doesn't impact people from coming back or leaving the game, right? In fact, it'll make more people come back. Maybe, oh, hey, maybe I could pull this monster. Maybe I could try it out. Maybe I could do this. Like part of the what, what makes this game fun for everybody is trying things out. You know, being a pioneer, trying things out. And I think like having balance patches, having new monsters is allows you to try new things out. You know, having new second awakenings and stuff like that. So I don't mind them rolling out new monsters, you know? You'd be surprised how many people don't actually care about trying things out. Like, I know you and I love doing that. We do it all the time with different stuff. Like, we try weird things out. There's actually a lot of people that don't, and it kind of shocked me, too. But I agree. Like, changing more, like, up, buffing more four stars and changing around, like, two A's and adding more two A's, yeah. I think is really what's going to be it for, like, the, the, the new players and the free-to-play players. Having more access to things that are obtainable and good at the same time. Trying new things need a lot of resources. You have to oh. demo them and have, you know, kind of set up for the new toys but some players don't doesn't have those kind of resources we need to start devil months that that that's what true. we need js it's really really hard to scale up you want them to give out more devil months but that is true js no, we we really need four star devil months in this game we've we've actually reached the point where we really really need it i'm doing carnival since it's really a pain ass for siege absolutely beautiful like multiple oh, yeah, Mercanos. I'm building my fourth one this week. Like wow. fifteen thousand summoning stones, and I only got three Carcanos. It's really five thousand. Five thousand for for one. It's the same rate as night fives. I got three night fives and three Carcanos. 
That's right. You got you got to give it to come to us. Like I'm not kissing your ass or anything, but the new uh, login event, you actually get a devil mon. How cool is that? Right. It is. They're log- the we talked about that last year and around yeah. this time as well on podcast when Island yeah, was still doing podcast. What's going on? But yeah, like um, for the logins, like we got devil mon and a reapp and uh, there's something else. We still got the regular LD score at the end of it, and they still get six star runes instead of a five or a six star rune, I believe. That's pretty good incentive. I like that. I'm logging in every day, right? You get 300 crystal. Or you get 300 energy, 200 crystals, an LD, a Reap, a Devilmon, five, 400 energy, and like a bunch of mana, and two legend runes, two hero runes, and four rare runes. Do you Beautiful. double that? There's six stars. Yes, you double that 100% by buying the $10 pack when it comes out. You have to buy that. Yes, it's $10. It's, yeah, and it's really, and there, it's, should I say the word affordable? For the it daily, is, it is very free, okay. So the ab- the the monthly Summoner's War bill now can replace going for coffee every other day because it's forty five dollars. You buy daily pack one, monthly login, yeah. double bonus, and daily pack three. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty, pretty nice. It's hard to kind of shit on that, right? Yeah, I think that's those things make. Uh, I know beginning players that they don't really play the game, but they at least log in every day or do like the daily, uh, the dailies every day, and these things are nice. Well, the thirty dollar daily three pack is three LD scrolls and twenty seven hundred crystals for thirty bucks. That's daily pretty daily. good. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's exactly what everybody wants. But yeah, what I was trying to say earlier, Thompson, is last year this time when we were on the Island Grown podcast, I brought that up three podcasts in a row that we need to change the login rewards. They need to be better. You and did. it took them a year. It took them a year to do it, but they finally did it. You did, yeah. They finally did it. That's the I'm thing. So happy. They're, fucking, they're slow about like good ideas. Like there's even like single solo raid R five. I've been crying for solo raid R five because of being on the wrong server and then having crappy internet for some reason only during R five. I've been crying for this. It took them. This is like five years late for me, but I'm happy it's here now. But it's it's been an idea. I'm sure a lot of people said, why can't I just solo this? I'm a busy person. I can't be attending. Even with 10 repeat battle with R5 it, with other people, it's still a chore to like have to keep looking. I got to chase my kid around. I might be working on something. And I get distracted. I, and then sometimes like I'll start farming. I got to go run off and do something. Or if I'm cooking, like I don't want to be stuck having touched my chicken greased hands on my to do R5. Because I have people waiting for me, rather than just being able to leave it alone. This is obviously I'm not trying. We already got solo R5. I'm not advocating to have it here. It's already here now, but it's late. In general, good ideas for the community for the game are very late to come in. One year for getting better logins. One year for or five years for solo R5. I don't know there's other stuff that's not coming to mind right now because I'm kind of brain farting, but it's, they're late. They're so they're very slow. For good ideas is what I'm well, saying. Sometimes you do it, but it's just like a little band aid over over it. Like it's like Shazam sucks. They buffed it, and they're never gonna touch it. Anymore. They nerfed it. In my eyes, eyes, if you ask me about Shazam, they nerfed it. Same with the bait. You know, like JS has the bait, right? And it it's not good. But they buffed it, but it's still not good. So it's like, whoa. We've been asking for a 24 fire speed lead. They released Tomo or Tomoe, however it's pronounced. I tried oh. it in so many variations. It it, it missed. It, Three skill three misses, even with debuff. Yeah, and it, it can glance. It, there's an accuracy it check. There's that. this. You remember when we were you and I, Thompson? We were messing with Fire Demon. They added yeah. the the anti cleanse debuff. Yeah. And we said, okay, he needs this, this, and this, but you want him to land anti cleanse on max res units. So how am I supposed to give this guy max accuracy, crit rate, and damage. crit damage, enough tankiness, high attack? At a certain speed point, how am I supposed to pull that off? And the crit fuck. They, they fuck the crit, crit too. Add that on top of that. You, you, <laughs> and we tried to make it work. Oh my god. There's well, only one I, good there's I, only I, one I, good place for Bale. That's it. Done. There's only one good place for Bale in the entire game, and that's siege offense. That's right. And I do use him there. For the dots, is good. I don't even think about the anti-cleanse coming. It's such yeah. a good idea, that debuff. Yeah, you just pop in with a skill three on a Tiana Galleon team, and it's good. Yeah. That's it. And that's exactly how I use mine too now. They should roll out a patch that just buff monsters they previously previously buffed that just still suck. Still That'd suck. That'd be cool. Just top it off. And that's, yeah. that's kind of like the chow buff. 
Okay, you can't tell me the chow buff is a good buff because that's what they originally should have done, correct? Correct. That's, I, I think that's a bad reasoning to say it's not a good buff. I think, no, no, if anything, that no. reasoning says it is it's a good the, buff. It was supposed to be like that. Buff that should have happened whenever they added it in the first place where he added cleanse. What was it, two years ago? That's when that the buff he got last patch, he should have had that two years ago. That's just, what did they do? They replaced, think of a good analogy for it because it, it just pisses me off because yeah. it's like, it's common sense yeah, that you wanted to cleanse <laughs> first. It's common Chow was good enough that he had his 100% ban rate in SWC. <laughs> What's, Chan, what's the... Chow had a 100% ban rate in SWC. Every time he was picked, he was banned. Yeah, but he, he should have been like that two years ago. It's not like they, oh, oh, wow, look at this great idea we had. Instead of him cleansing at the end of his turn, what if he cleansed at the beginning of his turn? And it's not like somebody just, their mind exploded in the Comptuous Balance Patch office when somebody said that. That should have been two years ago. That's like shit like that that irritates me with uh, these patches. It's not, it's not a, a unique, excellent idea. We should have had that already. Chow should have been a, a beast two years ago when he got the self-cleanse, is what I'm saying. The same with all some of these other units, but they give the weirdest uh, buff. Like, well, if they just added this, then it's a perfect unit. No, they're going to wait until later so that they can debate the community to say, oh, yeah, now it's a good... Oh, Chow, this unique idea that they gave this Chow buff. Now it's buff like i don't do you get what i'm saying i feel like i'm rambling i do get what you're saying yeah I... like it, it's it's filler that's the word i was looking for i used it before it's filler they gave it two years ago they gave chow a filler buff nobody touched it and then two years later okay it's time to flip how it should have been in the first place to like how it should have been like well i'm done talking i think you guys get what i'm getting at it's just annoying shit like that annoys me because it's I common wanna, sense. I just want to know why they do things. Like someone will go on your stream, Firas, and they go, "Hey, can I see you make Shazam work?" And you're like, uh, "Yes, I understand. I have Shazam, but yo, like this unit is not ruined up." They're like, "But it got buffed," and it's like, "No, it still sucks." Because people come come on stream and they'll be like, "Hey, like, can I see Karaka? Or can I see Laura? Or can I see Celia? But like, there's or can I see Manananan? They all got buffed, but like, they're still really, really bad units, you know." And uh, you can't really use those units, like, right? I'll tell you what, right now, what's going to happen with Manananan. What's annoying about Manananan? He can't kill a unit, right? <laughs> so guess what they're doing? Guess what they're doing next patch for Manananan? They're doing nothing. Don't worry. No, they're going to let him kill a unit. Well, why don't you just do this in the first place? You already know <laughs> that's what someone's going to complain about. For as in, like an example, they might do something completely different, but like it just makes people wait forever to get something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I, not even saying specifically LDs. I know you're mentioning specifically specifically LDs. I'm just regular monsters. Too. Other units, man. They're just sitting. They're just yeah, sitting. Like, I'm talking about regular units. They pop. That's just not enough as well. I have like all the elemental. Uh, no, for yeah, yeah. Like I want to throw down something that, like, I, like you have uh, an idea. Uh, for, like has, you? They. they are they going to buff Gyo again? I don't know, right? The, no, the we AOE. Uh, that's it. It's, it's, it sucks, it's, and it still sucks, and they buffed it, and that's it. They don't have the Band-Aid over the problem, and that's it. I, Gyo, I good meme. Come on. I you tried to do Karma work, too. Well, Karma and on top of it. I tried to do AOE Karma. Do you know what that did for me? AOE what? AOE oh. Karma with Shizuka and Tomo. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I tried. Oh, this? I ended up on Kenji. It was such a stupid team. I didn't intend it. For that, I was just trying to really make Tomo work and Karma work. I said, okay, what if I have Tomo move right after Verisa so she can push back a lot of bar and she absorbs a lot of attack bar. Push back and absorb, whatever, same thing is what I'm getting at. Then I'll use Tomo to apply Karma and then I'll use Shizuka to make it AoE Karma. So and then, then my Lulu opponent... Skill, you skill three. Yes, with Shizuka skill three. And then I say, okay, now we have AoE Karma. What's my opponent going to do? The exact same thing. I still get clapped. Lulu skill three and you lose. <laughs> It doesn't do anything. <laughs> I still lose. I tried to make it work. Fuck. I wanted it to work. I thought I could figure out something that Comptuous didn't. Or maybe they intended it to be that way. No. The problem with like Tomo is like she glances and she her third skill actually resists too. Yeah, exactly. Like I, you yeah. can't make it. It's so irritating when you compare it to like any other speed lead. Like, oh, Sierra, uh, Samath. I get it. I get it. She just kind of you, fuck. You can argue for it. Win harder unit. She's she's only good if you're already winning. Yeah, pretty like, much. What's the point? The what's the point? Ever won with Tomo, where she just sat nobody, there. Nobody nobody drafts units where you're. It makes it your your win more guaranteed. There's like there's no point, right? 
just pick something that can save you if you're if you start losing somehow. Karma glancing is really annoying too. I feel like if karma it, glances, or do you mean <laughs> do you mean glance? Yeah, and then get resisted too on top of that. Yes, if it doesn't glance, like they make this skill, it has potential, but it's like it's a Pepe oh, it just, laugh. So just ends up being a <laughs> shittier silence unless because <sighs> they have the to work, man. I wanted it to work. <laughs> I had so much faith in it and it fucking sucked. Funny. They tried. They they gave it a good effort. You know, it's like it's like when they added anti anti cleanse. They added it, they tried it out, they realized this is a dead project, so they just forgot about it. But it could have been good if it doesn't yeah, need a lot of things can be good, but they they're not. <laughs> they just they get left over and they're like, all right, dead project. You know, it's like it's like when you're a streamer or you're like an artist. You have all these like work in progress ideas that you want to add to your stream. But then you never finish them. They just sit there on your desk and you look at them every single time and you're like, wow, that could have been great. That's that's how come to us looks at certain debuffs. They look at karma like that. They look at anti cleanse like that. They look at Christina like that. They look at Geo like that. They look at Coco or not Coco, the wind one like that. They just look at them and they go, wow. The bay, you could have been great. I forgot about you though. I'm just gonna leave you on my desk. AOE, AOE uh, branding, right? He still does that, or did they take that away? He, he has the AOE branding. He still has that. Yeah. He's yeah, like so AOE AOE really AOE. follow up with it. We need to reverse Tian Lang with attack bar push. What? So it it denies attack bar reduction. Yeah. Well, so like AOE Masha passive. Before that, a the AOE additional the main meta right now, and I think it's gonna be like this for a long time, is additional damage attack bar control. So you, the you reverse can't... Tian Lang is called Ragdoll. Well, yeah, well, because yeah. generally you crit. LB variants. <laughs> what if Karma didn't glance? Actually, uh, GR Union is mentioned. What if Karma? Yeah, I think Karma glance? should be irresistible. <laughs> and that you too, can irresistible you can cleanse it. You can cleanse it. That's fine. Well, but it should be irresistible. More more importantly, how bad their second skill is. Did you guys watch the SWC? Uh, the America's Cup that just happened, like their first skill is even more shit. Yeah, like, yeah. Strip I watched J Mac try to strip your unit and it missed. It didn't even resist. It just didn't activate four yeah. times in a row. I was yeah. like, dude, this is brutal. Must and I, and I, I said it in the commentary too. I was like, wow, Shizuka not able to land strip at all. Not even a resistance. But like, uh, you you know me, you know me, uh, Tyler, and you know like mm -hmm. you also have the units that are 100 resist as well. So not those. Yeah. But the units that it doesn't have a hundred resist and just skill one needs a fixing as well. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Skill one is more important than both skill two and three. It may, it's a foundation of a unit. Like what Whoa. makes karma good? Their skill one is fucking incredible, you know? Dude, Josh has a good idea. Make just it make destroy. karma destroy HP. That's actually kind of cool. I like that idea. Karma would be a good I, counter. I would, I, long I, I'm a big fan of that. It's a good counter to healers. Very good counter uh, to healers. Lulu, but then you're also have to still make it Destroying HP doesn't have any like it doesn't it glances and like fix that first before yeah. like it doesn't land. You know? <laughs> but if it was just like an immediate HP destroy, <laughs> right? Like you know how like water bison passive works, where it's like you touch the unit, half its HP that was missing is instantly destroyed. It would be right? if it, Karma it be, destroyed HP like that, it would be pretty good. It would be cool if Karma forces them to do skill two or three, except skill one. If you do skill one, then they lose like fifty percent HP, something like that. I don't know. Uh... But, yeah. Or, yeah, they should have. They should also have punishment for using S one while they have Karma applied. There should be something. Yes. While, while yes. Karma is applied, you S one, you get destroyed HP. If you skill two or skill three, you just eat the Karma. It needs to land first. It needs to That's land cool. before you destroy HP. Yeah, it no glancing. I don't yeah. think it should glance. That's stupid. Irresistible. I'm 50 50 on, but I don't think it should glance. I really don't think it should glance. Maybe like <laughs> it's kind of like that old like scroll problem. The scroll sucks because like if you scroll them in, you could they could resist. But then they give him yeah. an extra turn, and it's like, whoa! Now it's OP. Now it's OP. <laughs> it's OP. Yeah, yeah. There's that balance of like making it too OP and making it like good enough, you know. But I, I think before you work on karma, you should work on their first skill. You know, it, just make it 100 percent activation. It's at 80 percent right now. It's not like their other skills are so overwhelming that <laughs> having them 100 percent on is... Does it like, hit twice? No, it's a single hit. Single hit, eighty percent fully skilled. Eighty percent and single hit. Come on, man. Yeah, like fuck, just make it one hundred percent activation, or make it attack three times. <laughs> mm, well, multi hit does uh, solves a lot of problems for. It does. It does. It does. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying they're they're. You have to fix their fundamental kit first, which is like the first skill. 
Oh no, all of them's not that good. No, make it 100 percent activation for for the for all five of them. Really, if you look at their 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 S twos and their S threes, I think one of them is a passive. Well, not, other than the wind one, the wind one we're excluding. It's not like they're they're overwhelming skills. Like if you give them strip on S one, it's crazy. 100 percent activation. I mean, I don't think that's, that's, that's you could steal one proc into skill two and then land a karma. You know, that's kind of cool. Oh, well, if Karma was a good debuff, yeah, we can say it's a cool Or you could skill one, do nothing, and then skill two glands, and then do nothing again, and you're just like, oh, I'll just sit there like, ah, uh, I got yeah, well, I just wasted all my runes on this unit, and it's my entire turn. I did nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. Now, it's hard. Nowadays, it's hard to buff units without making them too OP, right? Nowadays, we all know what makes, like, what makes uh, Fire Bison so good is because of the Provoke first skill, you know? like yeah. Two skills yeah. that multi-hit as well. First skill matters so much, you know? The, it's a foundation. His cooldowns are also pretty low. I would say, yeah. considering, okay, so he has low-ish cooldowns, but he also turn rotates, so it doesn't feel as long either. It's yeah, so I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to say a point. Like, the good monsters all have good skill one, you know? So let's just, yeah. like, let's work on her skill one before we work on skill three, because skill one buffs all of them, and all of them needs a buff. Maybe the damage multiplier really sucks on skill one as well, because I made a crit damage gill, and oh my god, it does no damage. Does Not Geo have any attack? Based at? Yeah, Chad, no, her, her just skill one multiplier is just really bad. And Gyo only has skill one to deal damage, right? On That's skill two, but they can, like, not do it, right? That's the same thing they should do with, uh, what's his name? The Light Bulver, Geldner? What's, how's it oh. pronounced? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should yeah. have him an awakening for his S1 to do something. <laughs> like, can you imagine being one of, one of two units with a 33 lead? The best you do is heal your team. You, you can't even build them on crit damage to do something. Yeah, the total multiplier is so low. Geld Geldner? Geldner? Is that what it's said? It's okay. We, I understand what you're trying to say. Everyone, everyone knows. Uh, okay. Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, yeah. Give him a, a, an S1 Awakening. If they want to just keep the other ones not as busted, give Geldner alone an S1 Awakening. Because he awakens into what? Resistance or accuracy? It's not like you're going to give him any other stats anyway. Uh, Hilnir is one of those LNDs come to us buffed once and they're never going to buff again, right? Is it in that category? Dude, I still think, I still think the, the Geldner buff is to change his passive so that every time you heal your team, you steal HP from the enemy team. So you give him like a pseudo health as passive. Yeah, just multi Because like the thing, the, thing, the thing with him is that you just you keep feeding him stacks because he keeps healing every time you hit him, right? Or Wait, you hit someone. All of us is cancer, man. Yeah, but I think that would, I mean, that would make the unit... It would fit what it already does and make it stronger is really what it is. Because I, I like the concept of having units... Really be, their own unique setup. What? I said Helfus is already a speed lead. You know, like having Gildir do what exactly what Helfus does. It's like, eh, eh. Yeah, but once for Guild Wars and once for Arena. Is it is it only Arena only? It's for only Halfus, Arena yeah. for Halfus, yeah. And Gildir's oh, only Guild Wars. Yeah, 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 okay, but yeah. But Halfus, Halfus, or Gildir's also 33 uh, Guild Wars lead. Yeah, uh, I guess. I, I don't think that'll be too exciting either or. They should give him an, a good S1 is what I'm getting. Almost it's still in storage because you bring a stripper, health us is done, but yeah. I don't think there's any other units I necessarily want to bring in or like talk about. There's probably more. We're, just, we're hung there's up on really and more. <laughs> there, there are so many units to talk about. Okay, I have, I have something I want to talk about. It's a little bit different from unit balancing and it's a little bit different from SWC stuff, but I want to talk about Special League. What are your thoughts on 20 Star Special League? And I'm going to go first because I have very passionate thoughts on this. I love Special League. Um, because I think it's something fun and something different. But ever since they added the two A's, I feel like Special League for 20 Star specifically has become very stale and very boring. My proposition to that is that all 2 A'd units gain plus one or plus two on their star value when you draft them in 20 Star League. Yeah, I agree. Because yeah. I think it forces creativity, which is what I loved about 4 Star and 20 Star. I haven't the done Special League since <laughs> the second. Yeah, I haven't done like the past like eight Special Leagues. It was there was a bigger meta and then a Lulu meta. I was just like, oh, all right, like it, it's cool, and I'm just too lazy to reroute. It's not worth my time. So yeah, uh, I think making them weigh boring. in at like you know, like a Lulu should be since a Lulu is a two star, it should be weighed in as either a three star or a four star. I'd be okay with that, right? And a bigger should definitely not be three star, like back in the days before yeah. his career. exactly, exactly, right? Uh, two A's need at least got one more star in the special league. Yeah, I agree with that. I didn't even play last special league, and I play every single special league. Because I, I watched a couple people play Special League, oh. and I was like, wow, this looks like the most boring thing ever. So I just didn't, I didn't do a single match. It was. It was pretty boring. Uh, you have to re this. It takes a lot of work. 
Yes. Yeah, yes. rerunning for two weeks is so fun. Rerunning for just two weeks of Special League. So much fun. Then, I, okay, I also think that when Special League rolls around, we should be a saved preset imprint of your RTA draft that you can change. Yes! Oh my that, god! That Ooh. is a good idea. Great that idea. is a good idea. Yes, thank you. Yeah. I just don't see why we don't have, like, loadouts for, you know, like, 20-star comes around? Okay, you get your 20-star loadout. Four-star comes around, you get your four-star loadout. SWC like mode yeah, comes out, you get your SWC mode idea. loadout. That is a huge, well, great idea. idea. I like that idea a lot. We only need four decks. There's only four different modes. Hey, Tyler, you think next year is going to be like this? You think it's going to take them a year? <laughs> I think it'll happen. Two. It's it'll take not... them two years. A year and a half. A year and a half. Well, it's me in the No, middle. I believe, dude. I believe. Six months. Six months. Six we'll get months? It. We'll get it in February, uh, I believe. Uh, let's make a bet right now, right here. I say a year. I'll bet you lunch. Over under six months. I'm rewards. It happened after a year. Okay. I say under, under six months, I win. You buy me lunch. You win, I buy you lunch. Sure. I'm down for that. It's going to be like 2025. We're going to quit the game already. Oh, it's going to be long oh, gone. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, but it's going to be long gone, dude. I hope so. I don't know. There's a lot of cool stuff like that that could be added. You know, a lot of small things. I also want more artifacts, babe, please. That yeah, too. Sorry, that's <sighs> kind of overdue now. I'm so tunnel vision on like RTA changes. It's so hard for me to see outside of that. And like, that's where I really like your ideas. Where your idea is like quality of life changes like that, which is like, whoa, like for me, I'm so like, wow, that's such a great idea. Like ingenious. I don't know. Like it's just a lot of work. Like for me, like I, I'm not that big of a siege player. I guess. So like, I guess it's a lot of work. Even if people are willing to siege, that's a lot of work as well. But I, I do mm -hmm. like, I, I do like the whole thing of it. Except I don't think, uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, this, um, yeah, this siege will be hard because like, Everyone is trying to uh, focus more on the SWC and stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I think we have a break for it because Siege Tournament should be second week of August, I think, or something like that. Or is yeah, it, but is uh, it near the end of it? But then the, uh, the planning and the preparation starts right now, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. That's actually what I like about it, though. I like being able to just, like, after stream, I go make food and then come back, sit down in Discord with the guild, and we just, like, work on defenses we test things we just, i don't know it's fun it's something different that i've never really had before in summoners or i like making food and then testing my rta now nah. yeah i mean, it's the same idea right it's just yeah. a different content, different piece of content. Yeah. yeah that's a lot of work man uh what are your thoughts on them buffing the rune packs and memorial packs oh that's that, off. wow <laughs> He bought, he bought he bought them like days. last week before they buffed yeah, it, so mad. That's why it pissed me off <laughs> two days before they did that i bought it but now you've got value because now you can buy it again. He's not gonna buy them again. I'm not buying it again. <laughs> oh, dude! Like, oh man, never mind. Yeah, but you get like it's super value. You bought them and now you can buy them again. Congrats. Congrats. I don't spend that much, Thompson. To be, I w I done my I've done my whaling for the month pretty much. Like, I'm not even buying these new packs. These new packs came out too late for me to buy them. I was so I was good. expecting these packs on Friday actually. Last well, obviously like. Three days oh, ago, probably. yeah. I spent ended up spending on those immemorials instead, and then I got screwed two days later. Oh, by the way, we buffed these immemorial packs. Thanks, that's great. Thank you. Like, did you buy it all out, like from like pack one to pack four? No, no, no. I only bought the the two one hundred dollar packs, and that's oh, it. Those are value. Those are good. Like, those are those are pretty good. Oh, now, now, yeah, now, now, <laughs> now they. I bought it last time because I needed crystals to keep farming, and then like I need something that I'm working towards, which was grinds to min max. Yeah. Well, then, you, you're in SWC and you're preparing for a tournament, so you know. So. Yeah, like I don't totally regret it. It just irritated me to see it two days later, not like a week later, not two weeks later, but two days later after I bought it. Unfortunate. Yeah. Now I know your secret fear. Now I know why you have such great runes. Why is that? Because you buy rune packs. No, no, I bought immemorial packs. Or <laughs> immemorial packs, it goes into runes. Well, true, yeah. I improved my rune quality, not my unit pool quality. You, you do uh, have... Okay, okay, relax. I, I try... Do you remember how many seven-year anniversary scrolls you summoned and how I many UNAF it. fives you got? I didn't buy any of them, though. I never. Yeah, I know, I bought 700 of them, I got one. I luck sacked so hard he, on those scrolls. He complains about me. unit pool. <laughs> wow, now, we're getting called out by Tyler. I didn't focus it, though. I summoned uh, 700, 700 seventh year anniversary scrolls. I got one Nat 5. He summoned like 250 and got seven. 
probably close to seven, I believe. Wow, yeah. congrats. I really luck sack. And he has the audacity to complain about seven. I, 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 I didn't complain. I'm just saying I didn't focus it. It came to me. All right. I, he's, just, I still, he's just blessed. He's blessed. Uh, I no, I'm for once in my life I got lucky. All right. I'm gonna. I'm taking it. Some somehow I pulled a Lydia. Somehow I pulled seven uh, not fives that I targeted and the seven year scrolls. For once I got like a, a chunk of luck in my life and I'm I'm taking it. I'm not complaining and that, that's it. That's the end of my. <laughs> you did fuck Lydia before. They did a long time ago. Right. Yeah. Buffed Lydia it, before. That's, Lydia's one of those monsters they buffed. It sucks, and they're never going to buff it again. Oh, she, does, she doesn't totally suck. I, I actually very hard to use her against you if you were going to use more against me. I did plan for it, but I I mentally choked on it, so we never got to have. Did you? Wait, did you draft more? I don't remember. Not against you. Against Jay Mac. No. Okay, yeah. Because I was going to whip it out against you there. You can whip it out. <laughs> Out of context. Whoa, relax. This is so, this is so extreme. Come on, this is not your stream. My bad. I was going to try it out on you. I, I found a niche use for wow, it. Wow, did your punching bag? You're just going to try it out on me? Whoa, yeah. Okay. You're just going to humiliate no, me? I tried it out he bitched out. I tried it bitched out. Ouch. I tried He's it out too, before. Too busy picking me along. Hey, that wasn't... A th okay, whatever. I know I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. I, I wish I got. I wish I got over those nerves before our match. His Mo Long pick is because he ran out of time and he picked the Mo Long. Because I couldn't find my more. My more was oh. right in front of my fucking face. I'm okay. like, where's my more? So I had Samoth in the filler. I said I finally found it. I unpicked Samoth and uh -huh. it auto picked Mo Long for me when I wanted to go more. Oh. That's what happened. Okay, dude. Yeah, like, timered. like. You know I'm your friend. Like you don't need to be nervous playing me. We're just like having fun, you know. No, it, honestly, it's not. It's not you. It's just you know I've been in tournaments before. Actually, we kind of talked about this earlier in the podcast yeah. where it was like, it's not about who I'm fighting, and I've and I've been in tournaments before where I don't get, I don't get nerves. Really, I've never been in a situation where I've been put in a nervous situation. Not even at work where I'm in like in some high risk whatever. Uh huh. I don't know why it hit me right when our match started. Not in the waiting room, not in preparation, not anything. Because I'm like, I know I usually just go my style. I did not go my style. And I choked on certain preparations I made. Only in the actual match start time, I don't know why that happened. And I couldn't I, I, find I, my fucking more. Oh, that irritated me. I felt like you played really well, and I got really lucky playing against you. Like you, you, you did good. You know, you drafted well, you played well, but yeah, not not in our match, not, not, in, not in our SWC match though. No, I, I, not I do think you played really well, and I got pretty lucky playing against you. And and I do feel like um uh you will come out. I I'm rooting for you. I hope you come out of your bracket, and we can play each other again. Hopefully, I hope so. I want my rematch. I want so I don't fucking choke. We, we, we match this right now. Up. This we brings up. Match right now. Well, we had our two matches before where we're yeah, doing scrims, our ladder scrims. Whenever, whenever we play each other, you kick my ass like 100% of the time. It's, oh, that's why I would say it's 50 50, but I choked in SWC. That's all That's all it is. Let's we can do it. We want, wait, hold on. You, you actually want to do matches right now? Whenever you want to do matches, we could do matches. I don't care. I just played this game because it's fun. Oh, God. Am I casting a match live? You guys yeah. want to do it? You should do it. Set it up. But I have a question for you guys while you're setting it up. Because I know both of you can share your screen in front of, instead of your cam. Um, um, is anyone my question computer to show, what? like, if we made a room? I can. I can change you my can. cam to my game, always. So you, um, you connect it to, to your computer is what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So, so I don't. Yeah, so I'll, I'll showcase the game. Okay, I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up. Yes. Um, so the one last topic that I want to bring up is... Do you think SWC matches should be seeded or should be randomized? Because this year it was not seeded. <laughs> and you can tell by the way the brackets were set up that it wasn't seeded. I don't know about that, man. That's a tough question, Tyler. Actually, the, re it wasn't the reason it that I bring done. it up is because I was talking with Alex about it. I I will go by what the company wants to do. <laughs> Okay, I made the room called Fidas versus Thompson SWC battle mode. Oh, that's okay. really freaking. That's a wait. How'd you spell it? <laughs> or are you putting it in? Uh, I spelled it Fidas vs Thompson with was... spaces or yes, with spaces. It... The normal way. Okay, the normal way. Well, I thought you might have a uh, 
a space issue with it. Wait, how, how do you spell Wait, it? Firas, <laughs> F-I-R-A-S, space, V-S, space, T-H-O-M-P-S-I-N. Your oh. name, space, V-S, space, his name. Okay, just F-V-S-T, man. I found, yes. <laughs> Can it be like F V T or something like that? You know? Oh my God! I can't v- versus. Just type in Fidas and you're good. It'll show up. Oh, it, spell check. Oh, it's first. Do okay. Wait, don't 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 zoom that stoic. Don't do it. It's gonna show up as a weirder resolution when we actually get into it. Oh, you're putting me on top. I see. Is there a password? There's no okay. password. Okay. Everyone's welcome. Everyone just joined in. All right. I'm ready. It's time. Is this real Thompson? Yes, it is. Okay, we started. If you want to get into spectate, let's go. I'll just wait until it shows on somewhere. All right, match number one. First pick going to Thompson. Well, we have a coming out here. And we have the best two <laughs> commentators. <laughs> Both commentators here. Oh, wait, Sorry, you want to oh, jump wait, in? You're... Why did you do a meme that? Okay, whatever. So, like, you want to jump in? Okay, I have. I... Oh, you have first pick. Shit, I messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> predictions are live, everybody. Predictions are live for your match of Fidas versus Thompson, the rematch of the century. NA's best prelims, best of three. First pick going to Thompson. Sierra preban on Fidas side. Thompson locks in the first pick. Okeanos, Fidas, the immediate counter pick, probably going for the Knicks alongside the Carnal. Picks the Fire Bison. How will Thompson respond? Will he take a speed lead? More as an option here. Sierra also being a fair. Oh, but Sierra's banned, so maybe not. Not sure if he wants to lock in the speed leads right away. Has the Chiwu opportunity, but what does he lean in? Lulu's still available. Hey Gang's still available as well. There it is. There's the Narsha. Locks in the Dark Beast Rider. How will Thras respond? Oh, Quivering in his boots. Gusto? When we were playing SWC, huh? You have more gusto now, Tyler. Because I had a throat infection all weekend. Okay. So... <laughs> it was, it was, I tried my best. It was hard, though. I tried my best. Okay, gotcha. I'll, be, right. I'll be better for this weekend, I promise. Okay, okay. Oh, all right. That, that's all. That's all. My bad, my bad. There it is. Fidas locking in. Chung Pong alongside the water Ryu wants to secure that speed lead opportunity against Thompson. Knows he only has one, but Thompson responds, immediately taking Tiana and Nephis. That nephis tiana combo, very, very strong. High damage potential, a lot of CC. No, he's really fast. Will Fidas lock in a 33 lead knowing he has two strippers already? Master, oh. Furious. Master, Furious. I am. see the Samoth. There's the, Ven- or the Vanessa, maybe. What are we going to see? He picks the Charlotte. Doesn't while I go grab. for the second speed lead. Thompson removes the Nyx, gives him the speed lead opportunity, but will Fidas be able to control this? Has a lot of potential here with that Tiana push to take first turn. Oh, and this is the part where where Stoic jumps in, and I don't I don't I don't do that part. And he goes, oh, first turn going to the Chiwu, Chiwu with the full team strip attack bar pushback. Your Chung Pong resisted. That's there what he does. The despair stun into the Okiano though. Oh. It doesn't matter because Tiana's oh. not stunned. Tiana will get the turn opportunity. Tiana. That was push. Nephi's going in full team defense break. All debuffs land, and here it is. Okiano with the rain of stones coming down on the whole team. Oh, no, rain of stones. Okay, it would mitigate the silence. Huh? But the spear okay, of destruction goes in, gets the reset, double crit on the Chung Pong. Chung Pong being very low here. Needs the carnal violent proc. Does he get it? No violent proc. Charlotte, one last opportunity, but there's nothing there. There's right. nothing there. The nemesis for the Tiana is going to push the team, and here it comes. Here comes the big skill, too, with the defense break. And oh, there no, goes half the team. Me. That's a sick set you have on Tiana. Yeah, no, what? It's, it's, you, I, I tricked you like that before. When, while you we're... did, I know. But I thought you would ban the more still. I will, but us come back. Needs the extra are. turn here on his carnal, but it's going to be hard. Has the attack break coming in soon. Needs one proc, one proc to change the whole game, to change the fate of his destiny in SWC. No. Dude, commentating is mwah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, I believe. Big stunts. Oh, you, you stunned the unit you needed to, but it was just a couple turn rotations too late. Couldn't quite get it in there, but here comes the silence. Needs a proc. Needs the big proc here from Carnal to win out the match. Pause, champ. Pause, champ. Pause, champ. Damn, and man. Where's my... Forfeit Oz. Where's my that is going to go down to Thompson in the first round. That is pretty much game. Unless... There's Wait. no way you win this with a more. There's no way. It's possible. It's not impossible, actually. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has the kick, the spin kick. 
Additional damage OP. No way, Nefty's wins this. Done. It's over. Fuck. It's over. <laughs> it was it's well, over. I had my thing on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. You have one turn Done. from it, right? Wait, oh, you're right. Big okay. Sag. Okay. Big Sag. I was supposed to have. I thought I had first pick. That's why I pre banned this year. There was supposed to be the other thing I was planning. All right, whatever. It doesn't matter. No excuses. So it's fine. GG, guys. GG. GG. Good match. Good match. I'm bad. You're exciting. Bike. I love that. I'm Are a you bad. You're playing round two? I'm a. Oh, okay. That's the wrong bison. <laughs> All right, round two comes in. Fedoss with the first pick, and there it goes. Water Bison. Thompson afraid of the potential destroy setup from the Fedoss here. Unique tech that we've never seen before in SWC, but it's coming out. And there's the Chiwu pre banner for us. Oh. Locks in the first pick, Sierra. Hey, hey. Nice the Sierra the Gianna combination right off the bat. I pre banned Lydia. It's Lydia, the secret weapon issue against me. Well, if you pick more, I'll show it. How will Thompson respond? Does he take another speed lead? There it is. Locks in the water, Ryu. Isn't oh, sure about it, though. We don't back. quite see it yet. I pick more. <laughs> Let's see it. Flexing the more and the Gianna. There he comes out. Dark Beast oh, Rider no. incoming. Bison. Don't you dare pick your Fire Bison. Don't do no! Okay, okay, okay. But okay, 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 sees it. He sees lie. the opportunity for the Fire Bison. Does he lock it in? Or is he going to give it to Thompson? I'll pick my is other. he going to give it away? It picks a Brandia. Another thing we've never seen before in SWC. Oh my goodness, double speed lead in here. Two stationary speed leads, the Sierra and the Samoth alongside the Brandia wants the triple element composition coming through. Thompson going for the all element comp, but instead locks in the Ragdoll yeah. to go along with the double beast riders. Cheating. I have a bear waiting for you. Here it is, here it is. The double Polar Queen combination, Lydia coming out in SWC, something we have literally Actually, we have seen this a couple times and it never wins. But I believe in our Canadian competitor here, Fedos Fedos, one of the highest ranked players in the tournament, finishing both season 16 and 17 at a really, really high rank with a solid win right there. What's the last pick? There it is. The Barbara takes the speed lead. Wants to pick for the one. You. Roar! Oh. And Thompson picking a Belio, the Water Druid, a little bit of an underrated unit there, but very strong against these nuke focused comps. Fedoss goes for the lock-in trap, lock-in ban on the Ragdoll. Doesn't want Thompson to get too many extra turns. Fedoss denying or losing his Sierra there. Who's going to take first turn? Or is it going to go to this Barbara? Yeah, dude, your cast, your casting right now, Tyler. Mwah. Mwah. Barbara lands the strip and the push into the sh into the. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, relax, relax there. It's just a small town dog. Okay, there we go. Rebellion doesn't That's what I need. Turn. Here we go. Rebellio loses his immunity. Ooh, should I should I push the turn? Does he save the skill three? Does he go for it? Okay, fine, I'll do it. He goes for it. The wild care comes up. No provokes land though. Water Ryu does get the turn. Here it comes. No stun on the Lydia. Lydia on the Nemesis build though. A lot of damage. Doesn't quite oh, knock off the Chiana though. Just to be careful. Big <laughs> stun here on the Samoth. Samoth will not get a skill two off, but unless he dies here to the Tiana skill three, but Thompson could save it. Could go for the skill two instead. Goes for the skill two. Gets the defense break. A little bit of attack bar there. Abelio will get the turn. Could Whoa! kill. But goes for the stun. Lands the stun on the Barbara. Barbara is denied an extra turn here. We know she's on Swift. She won't get an extra turn. And Abelio comes in. Another yeah, stun. Okay. Huge stun takes out the Lydia. It's Go, looking Bear, so Bear. grim. It's looking so grim. There's not much opportunity here for Fedas to come back. Needs a Samoth to get some really big value. But that Abelio with the extra turn is going to have a lot of strong healing coming in the next turn. <laughs> Here it is, the Night Ambush Raid. Samoth comes back with a vengeance. Do we see four to spare stuns? And we see two, we see two. Not quite enough though, not quite enough. Belio does get his turn, he can rotate. Could put up the heal soon here. I know. He's, he's staying so beast form though. Yes, he's oh, yeah. him again, Abelio is on despair. Yeah. I swear to God, this unit is insane, but we've seen the extra turns. Here it is, Abelio taking out with Avengers. He thinks he's Volantis. He's going for the every turn stuns. But Barbara, Barbara, can she take it out? Knocks the Tian off the mount. Now we have three dismounted beast riders. Hey, my, my, wait, what? My Brandia with the oh. big turn gets a lot of attack bar. 100 accuracy? How come my Brandia never does this? What is this? But no defense break on Siana, no crit, and it goes down, and it's just a 1v4. Barbara can't finish it off, and Thompson is going to ask you see America's Cup. Troy couldn't oh. use the other weapon, Lydia? Oh. Lydia was supposed to Oh, you canceled it? Come on. You want to play more? I thought it was best out of three. You want best out of five? Yes. 
So we have to win. So if I win no, one no. more, but I, but I also want the best out of whatever Ed ends up getting him a win. <laughs> yeah, well, we want to see the tech Lydia, even though I yes. kind of ditched it. Pretty cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. That was really awesome. You know how much damage I have on that? I couldn't even dis. A lot. Like, I know that's Dude, a weird ass. I don't know how you. My Brandia, I can't get 100 accuracy like that on Brandia on skill two. I don't know so how. Brandia oh. knows it's master, right? Oh. Brandia, oh. You, you don't know this, but my Abelio, it shouldn't land on my Abelio, and it landed on my Abelio. Wait, that's oh, everyone know, who voted Abelio. Thompson. Fucking turn. Yeah, 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 Abelio. What, Abelio was my secret weapon against you, because I know. Yeah, that's what you want to do about it. You already left the room? Dude, if podcast and when Fedas wins, can I order some food? Oh, huh? what? Food? Wait, oh, order some, yeah, you should probably order something. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. Also, we still need to go out this week, Fedas. Uh, yeah, we do. What are you going to do if I bring in Ragdoll with your double, double, uh, Polar Queen? I actually should have left your ragdoll, to be honest. Not your. Uh, did I pick ragdoll? 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 You did. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ragdoll is gonna be pretty. Painful. You should have. You should have left the ragdoll, and I think you should have banned the uh, Abelio. Yeah, that's ex that's yeah, that's what I should have done. The healing is too strong, man. Abelio's so good. It's the bear. It, it takes away from the Lydia tech. Oh, speaking of Abelio, do you guys like the new transmogs? Wait, what? Have you seen them yet? So they leaked them last night. Um, I was watching them on Mr. Slot stream, and the. Uh, there's a Tyrannus transmog where he turns into Shenron, like there's a summer a dragon. Dragon, right? Yeah, it's so cool. It's so cool. Yeah. I'll link it to you guys in the in the group so you can see. Yo, I never I had my hair do that. Like stun everything. Like do what Josephine. My Josephine doesn't even do that. No, my Josephine is garbage, man. Oh, I can't stand using that unit. She never does oh. anything. I have a really different approach to Josephine, and it sucks. <laughs> Is that the 100 resist one? Yeah. <laughs> does it does it work? Don't tell me what doesn't work, okay? No, no, I said does it work. I will make it work. I'll try. I, I I've never I don't have a Josephine, so I don't know if it works. I'll tell you this though: you'll never see me. You'll you'll never see me use Josephine in SWC. Probably, most likely, 90% you won't see it. No. I believe it. Yeah. Shenron Transmog. Yeah, that's... yeah, I know, right? It looks so good, dude. It looks so it, good. It's also good because cool. they recently buffed Volantis, and those Volantis users get to... And the Nefty skin looks really good. Wait, can I see the Nefty skin? Uh, I don't have a picture of it, but they they had, they had do this... Like, they're all beach transmogs, so they do this like, hip sway thing. They're like... All the skins just got like sexy versions. I think everybody hates the... Uh, the can I have on, but that's my favorite one. I'm gonna roll with it. I like, I like it. They're they're sitting on a uh, freaking a scooter. It's just cool. Yeah. All right. It's been about two hours. Does anybody have any last comments they want to say for the podcast? I first of all, I really appreciate all of you guys taking time out of your day to jump in. Um, it's always great to chat with you guys. Uh, thank you again, JS, for the first time jump, jumping in with us. Thank you. Yeah. You guys have any last things? No. Nope, everyone's done. All right, good luck next weekend, guys. Or this weekend, I believe. Okay, thank you. See you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us on the podcast, guys. See you later.